Hi, my name is Brian Hicks, and I'm going to be introducing Mantle. Mantle is a configuration project distributed by Cisco to create a known good, uh, usable version of Apache Mesos with stuff like service discovery, shared disks, IP per containers, and load balancers all built in. You should be able to just plug this into your infrastructure, and put your apps on it, and go. It's built on Apache Mesos, first of all which, if you haven't heard of it, is basically a cluster manager. It allows you to think as, uh, as if all of your computers are one computer. So say you have 20 VMs with one vCPU each, you can reason about that as if it's one computer with 20 vCPUs. This is our website, mantle.io, M-A-N-T-L, no E, dot I-O, and you can get to GitHub and our docs page from there. Let's go down and look at the architecture here. We start provisioning VMs with Terraform, so it's rather high performance and, uh, you know, well configured. And then we we'll put Mesos on top of that. We will have Kubernetes in a future release. And then we have Marathon, which is an app that runs on top of Mesos to provide scheduling specifically for apps. You can think of it as the init for your cluster. Let's go over to the GitHub page and check out the code. Notably right now, it's at Cisco Cloud slash microservices infrastructure. We recently renamed this project to Mantle, but the old remote remains still. It may have changed by the time you view this, so just check out mantle.io and it will have the correct link. We're going to scroll down here, click on getting started. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is check out the remote with, uh, with git, and then run git tag. You always want to be running the latest version. Um, so in this case, it's 0.3.0, but we're about to release 0.4.0, so do check git tag when you pull. The next thing we're going to need to do is install the requirements. Mantle is built with Ansible, which means it's a Python project, and so we have other requirements for that in this requirements.txt file that you can install with pip. Then we'll run the script security setup, which makes a certificate authority and sets passwords and encrypts data that you'll need to run in your cluster. And lastly, to get a single node set up, you can run Vagrant up. I've gone ahead and created a larger cluster in a cloud so that I can demonstrate what we have going on. This is what you'll see when you navigate to one of these so-called control nodes. We have two roles, uh, control nodes and worker nodes. The control nodes run the, the master services here, and the worker nodes run you know, the tasks that you define. So we can click any of these and go to the UI for the specific tool. You can see here that I, uh, I had a whole bunch of test instances that I, uh, you know, tried and spun up and failed. Um, and then you can see I have a couple of apps running. I have six CPUs and 2.6 gigabytes of memory available in the cluster, of which I've used 0.2 CPUs, uh, two-tenths of a CPU, that is, and 256 bytes or megabytes of memory. And then we have the following resources, idle and offered. And then we have this number of slaves active. Uh, do note that this slaves terminology is going to change. As of Mesos 1.0, it will be called agents. I'm going to open up our main page back there in another tab and go down to Marathon. Marathon is, as I said, the init manager for your cluster, and we should be able to, uh, to create a new test app here. So we're going to call it test, give it a tenth of a CPU, 16 megabytes of memory, no disk space, and one instance. We're going to run python-m simple HTTP server to give us just a simple process. We don't have to specify an executor, and we want a random port, so we specify zero here. If we specified a number other than zero, we would get the port that we ask for. 
uh, as a global port. In this way, we'll just get a random port, and that's fine. You can also specify to download URIs. So if you have a, uh, a jar or something that you've built, then you can download it this way. And we also have constraints. So we can say that the apps instance have to be, say, unique for hostname, so that you would never get uh, more than one instance of the app running on the same host. This is an availability issue. So we'll go ahead and click Create. While we're waiting for that, I'll note that most of the time, probably the majority of the time that you create and update apps, you'll be writing the JSON for these and putting it on the server yourself. That way you can version control your apps and access them programmatically. You'll also probably be running Docker containers instead of just running a Python script. Um, and of course, Marathon can do Docker containers as well. So we can go in here and see that we have uh, this worker running uh, this, this app. Go over to configuration here and we can see that I have a global port. I don't have this port opened up in my, in my cluster firewall, so I can't show you, but traffic is available within the cluster right now on this port. We'll go ahead and scale this app to three instances. We can see that in the deployment, it's uh, scaling the application, and we have one of three running. Now if we go over here, oh, we're failing, that's interesting. I must have underspecified something. Yeah, it's, uh, it's already taken up a port. That's what's going on. Okay, so finally now we have three workers. Uh, they're all on different hosts because their ports collided. I forgot to specify that. Um, and they're all running on these. So uh, that's all we really need to get started. And then of course we can suspend the app when we're done with it. I'm not going to though because I'm going to show you some other things. Now that we're running the app, we can go look at its services in console. Console is our service discovery and key value layer. And we can see in test here that we have these three instances running on these three servers, and their health checks are all passing and everything's fine. It automatically sets up a bunch of health checks just to make sure that everything's fine with the app when it's running. If any are not running, this green will turn red. Uh, just to indicate you that there's a problem. We can also see the nodes and key values. We have a service running, Marathon Console currently does this, that registers all of the apps in, uh, in console. So now we can see all of the apps, that are, all the instances as well as the app that are running. We'll look at Kronos real quick before we finish up. Kronos is basically the cron of your cluster. So where Mesos is like the computer and Marathon is like the init manager, Kronos is like Cron. You can create and add jobs in much the same way as you do Marathon, and it'll just be run periodically. So if you have long-running tasks like an app, like a web server, that you want to run, use Marathon. If you have an ETL job, for example, you would want to use Kronos. To recap, the code and docs and everything are available at github.com slash cisco cloud slash microservices infrastructure or you can go to mantle.io that's m-a-n-t-l dot i-o thank you